We're on chapter 18 of the Westing game titled The Trackers. It was Flora Bombach who braided Turtle's hair now, sometimes in three strands, sometimes four, sometimes twined with ribbons, while Turtle read the Wall Street Journal. <sighs> Listen to this. The newly elected chairman of the board of Westing Paper Products Corporation, Julian R. Eastman, accounted for, or announced from London, where he is conferring with the European management that earnings from all divisions are expected to double in the next quarter. That's nice, Flora Bombach said, not understanding a word of it. Turtle gave the order for the day. Listen carefully. As soon as you get to the broker's office, I want you to sell AMO, sell SEA, sell MT, and put all of our money into WPP, okay? Oh my, that meant selling every stock mentioned in their clues and buying more shares of Westing paper products at a loss of some, some thousands of dollars. Whatever you say, Alice, you're the smart one. Flora Bombach's hands were gentle. They never hurried or pulled a stray hair. Flora Bombach loved her. She could tell. I like when you call me Alice, Turtle said. But I better not call you Mrs. Bombach anymore because of the bomb scare, you know. Calling her Flora would spoil everything. Maybe I could call you Mrs. Baba? Why not just Baba? That's exactly what Turtle, Alice, wanted to hear. Was your daughter Rosalie very smart, Baba? My, no, you're the smartest child I ever met, a real businesswoman. Turtle glowed behind the Wall Street Journal. I bet Rosalie baked bread and patch quilts and dumb stuff like that. The dressmaker's sure fingers fumbled over the red ribbons she was weaving into a four-strand braid. Rosalie was an exceptional child, the friendliest, lovingest. Turtle crumpled the newspaper. Let's go. I'm late for school, and you've got that big trade to make but I haven't finished tying the ribbons. Never mind, I like them hanging. Turtle felt like kicking somebody, anybody, good and hard. Okay, why does Turtle react like that every time Flora Bombach brings up what a friendly, loving child she had? Obviously, she's jealous because she doesn't have a mother who loves her like that. So, Sandy was not at the door when they left. He was in apartment 4D, neatly writing in his patriotic notebook information gathered on the next air. Bombach. Flora Bombach. Maiden name Flora Miller, age 60, dressmaker. Husband left her years ago, sends no money. She has a retarded daughter, Rosalie, a mongoloid child. Sold bridal shop last year after Rosalie died of pneumonia, age 19. Spends most of her time at the stockbrokers. Weston Connection. Made wedding gown for Violet Westing, which she never got to wear. All right, one thing here I want to point out. She had, here it says, she had a retarded daughter, Rosalie, a mongoloid child. So these are two words we never use anymore to describe somebody. So retarded means that they're not very smart. And mongoloid is, a, is kind of a derogatory, like a mean word for saying somebody who has Down syndrome. So we know that her daughter... um had Down syndrome, which is, you know, just a, a different type of disability. So when she says, my daughter was friendly and loving, but she was not very smart and that kind of thing, it makes sense now because we know that she did have a disability. Um, but Flora obviously loved her a lot. And um, just the fact that she her daughter died at the age of 19 from pneumonia has to be horribly painful for um, Flora. So that's Turtle's very jealous of that relationship. Sandy turned to a fresh page, propped his feet on the judge's desk, and began to read the data supplied by the private investigator on Otis Amber. He laughed so hard, he nearly fell off the tilting chair. Haunted by last night's dream, Theo jogged behind his partner halfway to the high school before he uttered a breathless, Stop! Doug who stopped. Who lives in the apartment next to yours? Crow, why? Nothing. How come he didn't know that? Because no one ever wonders where a cleaning woman lives, that's why. But he wasn't like that, was he? Still, it must have been a dream. In the dream, the nightmare, Crow had given him a letter, but the only thing he found in his bathrobe pocket this morning was a Westing paper hanky. Hey, wait! Doug had started off again. I figured out our clues. Ammonium nitrate. It's used in fertilizers, explosives, and rocket propellants. 
I knew those clues were a pile of fertilizer, Doug replied, jogging easily. So fertilizer is usually poop, so it's a pile of poop. Doug replied, jogging easily. One, only one thing mattered, Saturday's big track meet. If he won or came in a fast second, he'd have his pick of athletic scholarships. He didn't need the inheritance. Stand still and listen, Theo grabbed Doug by the shoulders and held him flat-footed to the ground. Like it or not, we're partners, and you've got to do your share. Sure, Doug replied. His father was angry, his partner was angry, and the bomber was blowing up sunset towers floor by floor. Some game? What do you want me to do? Follow Otis Amber. Head tilted back, Flora Bombach squirted drops in her eyes, blinked, and started stared again at the moving tape. HR one thousand dollars or forty two and a half WPP five thousand thirty nine and a fourth. Oh my! Westing paper products had jumped four and a quarter. No, four and a half points. Her eyes must be blurry from the medicine. The dressmaker sat on the edge of her chair, biting her fingernails, waiting for WPP to cross the board again. There, WPP forty dollars. Oh my, oh my! This morning she had paid thirty-five dollars a share. There it goes again. <clears throat> WPP forty and a quarter. Oh my, oh my, oh my! After classes, instead of running around the indoor track, Doug Hu jogged out of the gym to the shopping center six blocks away. There was Otis Amber, placing two cake boxes in the compartment of his bike. He picked up a package from the butcher shop and pedaled off, unaware of the sweat-suited figure, trotting half a block behind him and went into Sunset Towers to make his deliveries. Hi, Doug. Gonna run the mile under four minutes on Saturday? The doorman asked. Sure hope so. Do me a favor, Sandy. Give a loud whistle when Otis Amber comes out, okay? <clears throat> Chip Tooth Sandy gave such a loud whistle that Otis Amber would have been deafened if the flaps of the aviator's helmet had not been snug against his ears. Leaving his bicycle in the parking lot, Otis Amber boarded a bus. Doug ran the five uphill miles to a house with the placard E.J. Plum Attorney. He ran another three uphill miles after the bus t that took the delivery boy to the hospital en entrance. Doug sank down in a waiting room chair, wiped his face on his sweatshirt, and picked up a magazine. Fascinated by the centerfold picture, he almost missed Otis Amber, who dashed out of the hospital as though fleeing for his life. Hiding behind parked cars, Doug followed the delivery boy to another bus, ran four steep miles to a stockbroker's office. How is it that all roads go uphill? From the broker to the high school, from the high school downhill at last, back to Sunset Towers. The exhausted track star leaned against the side of the building, thankful he was not a long-distance runner. I gotcha! Otis Amber poked a skinny finger into Doug's ribs. He he he, he cackled, handing the starty, startled runner a letter. It's from that lawyer, Plum. Says all the heirs gotta be at the Westinghouse this Saturday night. Sign here. With his last ounce of energy, he wrote Doug Who Myler on the receipt, then slid down the wall to a weary squat. Some Myler... His feet were blistered, his muscles sore. He could barely breathe. He might never run another step in his life. On receiving the notice of the Westinghouse meeting, Judge Ford canceled the remaining appointments and hurried home. Time was running out. Sandy read to her from his notebook. Amber. Otis Amber, age 62, delivery boy. Fourth grade dropout, IQ 50. Lives in the basement of Green's Grocery. A bachelor, no living relatives. Westing connection. Delivered letters from E.J. Plum Attorney, both times. I'd have guessed Otis Amber had an IQ of minus 10, Sandy said with a smile. Go on to the next heir, the judge replied. Dear, D. Denton Deer, age 25, graduate of UW Medical School, first year intern, plastic surgery, parents live in Racine, not heirs, Westing connection, engaged to Angela Wexler, C. Wexler's, who looks like Sam Westing's daughter, Violet, who is also engaged to be married, but to a politician, not an intern. That's awful complicated, I know, the judge apologized, but it's the best I could do. Pulaski. Seidel Pulaski, age 50, Education High School, one-year secretarial school, secretary to the president of Schultz Sausages, is taking her first vacation in 25 years, six months saved up time. Lived with widowed mother and two aunts until she moved to Sunset Towers, Walked with a crutch even before she broke her ankle in the second bombing. Now needs two crutches? She paints them. Westing connection? Question marks. 
We don't have any medical reports on her muscular ailment, Sandy reported. The nurse at Schultz Sausages said she was in perfect health when, when she left on vacation. Strange, the judge remarked. A suspicious malady. No apparent Westing connection. Somehow, Seidel Pulaski did not seem to fit in. Seidel Pulaski clasped, er, clasped the transcribed notes to her bosom. My little secret mustn't peek, she said coyly, but the doctors had come to see Angela. The plastic surgeon loosened the tape from her cheek and peered under the gauze. One graft should do it, but we can't operate until the tissue heals, he said to the intern, then spoke to the patient. Call my secretary for an appointment. In two months, he strode out of the room, leaving Denton Deer to replace the bandage. I don't want plastic surgery, Angela mumbled. It still hurt to talk. Nothing to be frightened of. He's the best when it comes to facial repairs. That's why I brought him in. We'll have to postpone the wedding. We can have a small, informal wedding. Mother wouldn't like that. How about you, Angela? What do you want? He knew her unspoken answer was, I don't know. The door flew open, slammed against the adjacent wall. Where do you think you're going? Denton pulled Turtle to a halt by one of the streaming ribbons twisted in her braid. The sign says no visitors. I'm not a visitor. I'm a sister. And get your germy hands off my hair. Denton Deer hurried to seek first aid for his bleeding shin and sent the biggest male nurse on the floor to take care of Turtle, the same male nurse who chased Otis Amber out of the hospital for sneaking up on a nurse's aide carrying a specimen tray and shouting, Boom! Person. I changed mine to victim. Turtle paid no attention to the victim. She was more interested in two men entering the room, the burly male nurse and the creep of a lawyer plum. I gotta go. Don't say anything to anybody about anything, Angela, no matter what happens, not even to a lawyer. You know nothing, you hear? Nothing! She skirted Ed Plum, ducked under the outstretched hairy hands of the male nurse, slid down the hall, scampered down the stairs, and out of the hospital. Hi, how are you? Ed Plum smiled at Angela, ignoring the patient in the other bed. He didn't recognize Miss Pulaski without her painted crutch. I'm sorry to hear about your accident. Otis Amber told me about it. Just thought I'd drop in for a chat. The young lawyer, who had admired the pretty heiress from the minute he laid eyes on her, did not have a chance to chat. Grace enter Wexler entered the room, saw the answer to the clues, Ed Purplefruit, the murderer, standing over her daughter, and uttered a blood-curdling shriek. Three visitors in one day? The first was Otis Amber with a letter and another receipt to sign. Chris had pretended to be scared by the boom, but he wasn't really. He had twitched because he was excited about going to the Westing house again, even if he hadn't figured out the clues. Then Flora Bombach came to see him. She wasn't nervous at all with, the, with that nice lady. She smiles that funny smile because she's sad inside. She once had a daughter named Rosalie. She told him how Rosalie would sit in the shop and say hello to customers and how she would feel the fabrics. Mrs. Bombach made wedding dresses, which are mostly white, so she bought samples of materials with bright colors and patterns because Rosalie loved colors best. Rosalie had 573 different swatches in her collection before she died. Mrs. Bombach said her daughter might have been an artist if things would have turned out differently. What would I have been if things would have turned out differently? The third visitor entered. Limping. His partner was limping. Too much excitement in his stupid body, jerking all over the place. Denton Deer sat down next to the wheelchair. Take it easy, Chris. Calm down, kid. I'm not the creature from the Black Lagoon, you know. His partner was a doctor. His partner, a doctor, watched horror movies on television, too. Slowly, arms untangled, legs unsnarled. Slowly, Chris stuttered out his news. Flora Bombach felt so guilty about seeing their dropped clue, she told him one of her clues, Mountain. But we mustn't tell Turtle. Okay, I'm going to pause right here and we're going to stop because this is a long chapter and I only have 15 minutes of recording time per recording. So go to the next part of this chapter now.